do most of my kayak fishing in the ocean where sharks are a fact of life. Although they can be found all around the coast of Australia, it's generally not all that common to encounter them. That's not the case in Shark Bay, North New South Wales though, where the opposite is often true. It also happens to be where I spend most of my time fishing all year round. Here we come across sharks of all shapes and sizes, from black tip reefies to larger white pointers. I'm not the first kayak fisherman to have had a few encounters with larger sharks at Shark Bay, and I won't be the last. Most of the time, encounters with sharks are a result of hooking them with lures intended for other fish. They're particularly fond of Rapala Magnum countdown lures, and as such I hook my fair share of them. Regardless of their size, they're always a handful. The bigger they get, the harder it is to deal with them. Sharks are incredibly strong, they've got cardio for days and are extremely unpredictable. Whilst it's possible to reel a larger specimen in, attempting to land them on a kayak is rather foolhardy. Not gonna happen, is it? <laughs> it's just not gonna happen. It's not going to be easy to get that right. In these instances, it's simply better to cut the line and let them go. Besides, the larger the shark, the worse it tastes. However, smaller sharks of four foot or under are very tasty and will always trump any flake you might buy from a fish and chip shop. So if I think I can get away with it, I will try and land them, but this is never all that easy to do. Remember what I just said about sharks being strong, fit and unpredictable? You can't just reel them into the side of the kayak and lift them aboard. It's just not that easy. First you have to be sure it's not going to overpower you on board, so that means tiring it out and making absolutely sure that it doesn't have anything left in the gas tank before hauling it in. I do this by fighting it with a rod until I'm fairly confident that it's losing strength. When I suspect that it might be about time to pull them up, I first attempt to grab a hold of the shark so I can feel exactly how much strength it has left. Sometimes when I do this, the shark is ready to come aboard, sometimes it's not. If it starts kicking around like a rodeo bull, it's too early to bring it in. In these instances, I'll usually maintain my grip and try to let it thrash out the remnants of its energy supply. If it becomes apparent that this is going to take a while, I take a few measures to speed the process up. Sometimes I do this by pedalling forward and dragging the shark backwards. And it's round it. Just take out its side force by dragging it backwards. I've also started making an incision in the face of the shark's tail, which helps bleed the shark. This method seems to work pretty well. I've learned that it's really not a good idea to gaff a shark unless you're sure it spent most of its energy. Because their skin is so tough, gaffing them through the body is likely to fail. It's far better to gaff them through the mouth, because not only will the gaff appear much easier, it will also help you to control the business end of the shark. that you simply wouldn't dream of attempting to catch. Like the great white shark I encountered here in winter 2009. There's a shark right in front of me. Pretty big. I find it is. I spotted this beast from about 100 metres away, just floating around on the surface amongst the frenzy of bird activity. My plan was to drift along behind it, take a few snaps and then move away. 
But when my drift brought me within 10 metres to its rear, it must have sensed my presence because at that point it turned around and without any hesitation swam right for me. This is what happened next. Oh, yeah.